Okay, thank you. Uh, I will start my presentation by thanking Alexi and the organized committee for inviting me. Uh, it's really a privilege to open a keynote session and speak before Michaelson and uh, uh, Martin Odeski. Uh, and probably none of this person need a presentation, but everybody's asking why you are there. Uh, and so let me spend just a little bit, a few minutes, telling about my story in big data and what big data, uh, the different meaning of big data in my life. Uh, as uh, Alexi told you, I am a scientist. Uh, I am a scientist wearing a hat, an engineering hat. And what this means will become more clear while I'm presenting my, my, my slides. So my journey in big data started in 2001. Probably I'm an old uh, person in this room. Uh, 2001 is when I start my PhD and is the year in which uh, people start talking about Web 2.0 and the same year in which Wikipedia was born. And none of the social networks, uh, we know them today, were actually there. Um, what data, big data means for me? What was, what was the meaning? Well, the meaning was 300 million node graph and 1.2 billion uh, edges. Well, it's not uh, anything big in the mind of many people, but uh, it just didn't fit. Didn't fit my random, there was no algorithm. My language was C, and I was implementing very complex data structure to implement external and semi-external algorithm to basically study the topology of the web. That was big data in that year, before 2006. Um, what was my main problem at that point? Scalability? No, not really. I just want my program to terminate and give me a result. Um, probably I wasn't one of the lucky person. Uh, sometimes life is being at the right place in the right moment, and I think I was. Uh, in 2006, uh, I joined Yahoo Research soon after uh, dog cutting is when uh, is the year in which uh, Adu planned to Yahoo. And it was a blast. Um, it was really a blast. Even if we know all the limitations that Adu has in this moment, uh, Yahoo Research was uh, uh, um, granted uh, first research purpose uh, cluster, initially 20 nodes and after 100 nodes. Well, it was really a blast. We were just doing massive data managing continuously. Machine learning was enabled. Um, we always were eating the, uh, the plateau of training curves on the majority of our problem. Were the year in which uh, uh, Yahoo Research was actually winning all the best paper award in many, many conferences. And that, all of this, was enabled by, by Adobe. But reality is that uh, data mining and the science were not done on big data. The vast majority of the training, testing, and product uh, data lived on my PC is where, where I was doing the majority of my work. Uh, and obviously using R, Weka, Python, whatever you have heard. And reality is, is that big data didn't eat production. So yes, Hadoop was powering the vast majority of uh, click or search, but in a totally batch fashion. And this is, in my opinion, was far of being big data. And 2012, when I finally left, uh, yeah, well, I was frustrated. Data scientists were living in building F, engineering was living in building G, and we never met. And never science were actually ending in production in the way we actually think. 
Um, in 2012, I joined Stumble Upon, and the reason is I wanted to be in the area of uh, data consuming company. I wanted to, to enable data science at scale, and I wanted to be able to eat production with machine learning. And again, I, I think I was in the right place, in the right moment, uh, Kafka was released, first release was uh, 23 October 2012. I do remember, it's my birthday, I was blessed. Best, uh, I will say, birthday present ever. Um, and I was principal data scientist till 2014. What I was doing, a lot of machine learning for generating offline racks, for content understanding, for user modeling, but still, this is not big data. This is still small data. And the vast majority of the company in the data consumer space that are data driven are not able to be, to use big data in a machine learning fashion. In uh, uh, one year ago, on the field, suddenly, I was promoted the senior director of engineering. Um, and the reason being is that I, I had a vision. I had a vision that I was not able to implement as principal data scientist, and I wanted to implement. And again, uh, I am a lucky person, right moment in the right uh, uh, time, spark and storm came to help me. Um, so what is my talk about? Uh, you probably heard a lot of talking about uh, making data-driven data decisions at scale, uh, machine learning, Amazon service, uh, unleash the power of your data. Uh, but the reality is that it's not always so easy, I would say, but it's finally possible. Um, so I will present a little bit of the integration challenges that I am trying to solve in the last, very last year. And I will present two use cases that goes beyond on analytics. The vast majority of the talk that I hear uh, talk about analytic pipeline. Uh, but machine learning is much more than analytic. It's much more than basic count. Uh, they really can help people to do a better job in many different applications. And I will present to uh, the application we are working so so it's not my objective to convince you that uh, the set of scala based technology have become the de facto standard for big data i am a believer uh, and if any of you has a, has a doubt mike olson and uh, martino deski will take care of, of it um, my problem is that even when you have a straightforward approach, you saw yesterday you can implement end-by-end -end pipeline in one day. Well, integration can become uh, cumbersome when you have an ecosystem that uh, is 14 year olds that does not respect any of the uh, modern uh, architecture uh, paradigm and needs to change. Meanwhile, you are trying to implement a total new technology. Uh, but it's still possible. So we, want, we wanted to try to uh, moving from previous language like PHP to Scala in a, a, with a seamless integration. Uh, so what is your problem? Legacy. What is legacy? Uh, in my experience, legacy is an house of cards. Uh, it's really unstable. It's something that uh, uh, probably over 14 years you did something pretty incredible with it. Uh, and you are there and you are looking at it and say, wow, this stuff, it's really cool. I really can do a really incredible thing. But the only thing that you don't want to do with it is touch it. 
don't even try. I try for one month, and I said, okay, forget it. Let's, uh, let's do something else. This is what I inherited one year ago. I say, okay, simple, simple structure, right? Um, just for the um, people that doesn't know what SampleUpon does, you register, you declare your interest, uh, that could be computer science, machine learning, uh, cooking, whatever it is. And after this, we start the routing content to you. We learn from the interaction that you have with the, with the search engine, and we tailor the flow, the information. So you don't need to search for information. The information is routed automatically to you. We work in a, I would say, between entertainment and information. We made of information a form of entertainment. Um, so, as I told you, uh, this is 14 year old. Uh, was written totally in PHP. Uh, I say totally, but sometimes you find some piece in Java, some piece in PHP, some Perl in Perl. That is uh, kind of uh, weird. Um, and uh, the problem with this data structure is that there are a lot of uh, component of functionality that in the modern time you probably would have implemented at standalone microservices that instead are embedded, are embedded all along your monolithic structure, end to end. Um, so how you do that? So when the majority of your small team, and some upon us 44 engineers in total, right? And my team that manage all these uh, uh, is eight people. Uh, the correspondent teams in Pinterest are like six teams. Uh, so just to, to, to say, to, to tell you. So wh when you're, the majority of engineering is working on uh, keep uh, the legacy running, right? And modify the legacy running. When your data scientist, no, I just use R, no, 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 I just use Ive and Pig, and they don't want to, to migrate. And when uh, uh, you want to innovate, uh, 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 w what are the things that you care? First of all, you need to leverage code that is written in many different programming languages. You cannot implement everything from scratch. Everything is very complex. You want to have the ability to receive data from a large uh, variety of sources. I don't say anything new when I say that I want something that is fast, that is fault tolerance, and can process events in an incremental fashion. And in most of the cases, you want to have a purpose-built cluster. You don't want to mix up with legacy or with hardware that's too old and you want to decommission. Um, what is the choice in this case? So the first thing that I decided to, to change in, in this, in this uh, monolithic system was the ingestion pipeline. Currently, our ingestion pipeline uh, takes end-to-end -to -end around 10 minutes. In these 10 minutes, we had to do an incredible amount of sync. Uh, we don't work on catalogs. Netflix or Amazon or all the big rec engine that you usually uh, deal with uh, have catalogs, so they exactly know what the content is about. Uh, Sample upon we don't. Everything that is out in the web, trillion of page, can become a candidate for recommendation. User come to us, they ingest the content, and we don't know anything about the content. Uh, so in these 10 minutes, we try to understand everything. We try to understand the language. We try to understand the content. We try to understand uh, the format. Is a news? Is evergreen? Is a video? Whatever it is. Um, and uh, we do some so sort of classification. Which interest match? Is uh, computer science? Is machine learning? And even if it's machine learning, is machine learning for newbies or is machine learning for uh, uh, a data scientist, the principal data scientist. Uh, currently, it takes 10 minutes. So, this is awful. 
this is awful, right? 10 minutes. What if you want to do anything? If a user comes in just some form of content and you want to leverage this, create an engagement experience, you want to say, okay, you just uh, uh, submit a, a, a content on machine learning or Scala, I want to react and present you what similar I have in my uh, repository for you. Uh, current methodology doesn't allow. How do you solve the problem? Well, you want to find similar items, you want to find items that dig further in a specific topic, or you want to dig further in broader topics. Uh, and also, you have some form of constraints, right? You want the very quick ingestion to recommendation turn around time, around 10 seconds. 10 minutes right now, good luck with it. Uh, you needed to adopt streaming process it with at least one guarantee. I cannot lose any of the content that is in jest. I needed to build an hidden potent system. So I don't want, once something is processed, I don't want to reprocess ever again. Uh, and I want to capitalize on non-linearity when I have the, the possibility of doing that. And obviously, for retrieval of the rack, I need low latency, so I need two pre-compute racks, and I want to retrieve racks in constant time. And obviously, horizontal scalable design, but this is not news. So what was the scientific approach behind it? Well, first of all, you do your batch work, right? You select the AI quality data set for your training and for your testing, and you do this. And online, for each URL ingested, you want to extract all the text feature that characterize URL. You want to compute topic caching, filtering noise keyword, finding generic topics, specific topics, and compute the similarity relevance. This is how the pipeline look like. It's a pretty straightforward pipeline, I believe. Uh, you want to parse, you want to detect, remove the boilerplate, detect the language, do some sort of cleanup. You'd never have a page with one language. Uh, do some noun chunking. Uh, use whatever tool you can use, and this came with legacy. Wikipedia notation, machine learning, uh, NLP tools. Uh, at this point, you want to coalesce tag. New York Times and NYT are the same, and you need to know. And you want to compute the tag score. The technology we use is pretty uh, straightforward, right? You want to present a similar document. You, what you do, you map your document in a complex topic space, and you basically compute a similarity measure between this topic space. Um, are you all familiar with LDA? Who is familiar? Um, not, not many. Okay, so LDA is uh, it's a potent uh, algorithm, I mean, it's an unsupervised algorithm. In two words, what we try to do is uh, observing the word in each, in each document. We want to understand what are the topics that uh, this document is about. So if I talk about uh, uh, LT receipt, obviously my document is not just about cooking, but is also, also about health. But if you are talking about uh, uh, Nutella, cake, chocolate, uh, whatever it is, there is no health in this, uh, in, in, in this document, right? So as you can understand, a lot of document can be interpreted, look, a different uh, you know, dimension. This tag, this dimensional topic space is when you want to work. This is an unsupervised method and it's pretty standard. Uh, and basically what it does is generate uh, topics automatically like this that you see is pretty meaningful. And you can map each of your documents in this space. Uh, what was uh, our choice for implement all of this? Um, Pretty straightforward, right? We obviously, obviously, 
uh, decided to use a storm. Storm allowed us to basically uh, respect all the service layer agreement that we, we put in place. So we use uh, previous uh, 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 legacy uh, component and we wrap uh, in order to send events to the Kafka broker and uh, we implement uh, a classical storm topology written in Scala and so I basically force my engineer to start using Scala uh, and we basically generate topics and we save in HBase. Uh, reason being is that we need it for uh, batch computation every night to regenerate topic on the fly and uh, Something that I want you to, to notice is that for the topic model, we actually use data. Why? Why using data? Uh, because machine learning is still small. So even in this very complex uh, environment, uh, actually we can train and uh, uh, test our model on a single machine, 24 cores. Um, and uh, mm, this is a, an important aspect. Uh, the Spark uh, and uh, all the, 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 the Scala-based technology have enabled, right, machine learning at scale. But the reality is that this happened one year ago. The vast majority of data driven company or data consumer company are still uh, collecting hanging fruit. You unleashed the power of data on company that never used data so far. And the problem that they are trying to solve a really simple problem and they don't live in the complex space. Uh, your dimensional space is small enough to still fit uh, one single machine. Um, this is what the, the pipeline is about, uh, a little bit of numbers, but the important thing for me is that, yes, we got it. This pipeline now is able to uh, process URL in 10 seconds, so five, in five seconds, no, 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 10 seconds, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> and. Uh, I want to present another case. Uh, the other thing that I start, that I work, I wanted to work was uh, what we call your quality score. So think about user rating your content, right? Uh, in the most of the case, basically all the company, and you can totally see this when, for example, you stumble upon Pinterest, do not react runtime of ratings. There is a batch job that during the night, do something, and the day after, you see the effect of the user behavior on the recommendation engine. So you need at least 24 hours. But uh, this is crazy, right? I want to react in real time for the user. And there are content like news or like trending content for which I want to understand what's going on. Meanwhile, it's happening. I don't want to wait 24 hours to understand that that was the news. Oh, thanks God. It's gone. Um, the problem is that very few users give uh, ratings. In general, it's less than 5% of all the interaction in any social network, Netflix, StumbleUpon, Pinterest, you call it one, less than 5% of iteration are actually light. So you don't have information about that iteration. Uh, but you can use some signal. Uh, you can use uh, time spent, uh, number of clicks, if you scroll a page. At some other point, we just get uh, time spent, right? So what we thought to do is this. Okay, let's take this in real time, and let's take uh, the information that I collect from each user so far, and in real time, meanwhile is happening, next stumble, I decide if the time spent, given a number of features, mean that you liked or you disliked the page. We implement uh, this pipeline 
and we got to 77% of accuracy. This is a great result. It's a great result because if you think at the Netflix competition challenge, uh, are you familiar with the Netflix competition challenge? So they had exactly the same problem. 5% of ratings, same uh, density of the data set that I tackle every day. They spent $1 million, right? I don't have it, $1 million. And even if I have it, with, what, with the, this kind of data, implementing increasing 10% of the accuracy will brought me to an accuracy of 72% that I still doesn't want to use in production. Using this kind of algorithm, I can actually bring the density of my recommendation metrics from 5% to 35%. And uh, matrix factorization with these data uh, touch an accuracy of, of 83%. So I can actually go in production without spending $1 million. This is what we implemented. And the problem that I had this time is that I didn't know what I was doing. What I mean with this? This was a research problem. I didn't know that the feature that I select was the right one. I didn't know if I could do it better. I didn't know if uh, the machine learning algorithm that I was choosing was actually the right one. So I want a real-time machine learning pipeline for research purpose. I want to be able to change my feature without redeploying everything. I wanted to be able to change my learning model without redeploying everything. Once again, the cho we chose Storm for this. Everything is implemented in Scala. Uh, and uh, basically, this pipeline NICE is fully integrated with the legacy. I'm concluding my talk uh, saying something that, so it seems that I'm I'm claiming here that there is no need for big data in machine learning. No, I'm not saying this. I'm saying that when you start in a legacy, there are a lot of constraints. But I will say that appetite comes with it. So after we implement this two pipeline and we actually uh, integrate it successfully in our pipeline, we said, OK, now we want to tackle real complex problem. And now we want to learn a number of dimensions uh, that are extremely large. And we hit the limit. This is actually the, the, the project that we're working. We are trying not only to model uh, content in a tag space, we are trying to model a user in a tag space at the same time. And we try to learn all this model. So in this model, the only thing that you know are the things in the square. All the things that you see in the circle, you don't know, and you want to learn. When you actually do this, even implementing on parallel uh, structure, not using, uh, uh, I would say, uh, the right technology, training can take days. So when you are in this situation, and we are in this situation, you actually eat the bottleneck in batch. Um, so what is next? Uh, you cannot do anything at this point if you don't use Scala, if you don't use Spark. So, and I think that the message that I want to convey to everybody is that when you think about machine learning at scale, don't believe to buzzword. Scale your system. Think about what machine learning means for you. Think about the complexity of the problem that you have. Think about how integration uh, play in everything on, uh, on, on whatever you want to achieve. But when you need, use Spark and use Scala. Thank you.